Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome back to another devlog. In this one, I decided to come back to the subject of interpolation. I've worked on that before in a previous devlog, but the system I came up with had a few problems, the most annoying one being that it didn't work when interpolating local rotations, so I actually haven't been using it in those cases. This resulted in very choppy movement for things like the ship's steering wheel and cannons, since those objects simply snap to their new rotation. In this devlog, I'll be tackling that issue. Over the last few days, I've been working on getting to the bottom of what's causing the weird behavior with the capstan collider. The developer of Beppu Physics, Norbo, has been extremely helpful on the forums. It turns out that when my ship was spinning in tornado mode last week, I had actually configured the constraint properly. The problem turned out to be the ship's inertia being calculated incorrectly. I fixed that now. The ship no longer spins and the capstan collider is locked in the correct position, however the player's collider doesn't seem to collide with the capstan as I can simply walk right through it. Obviously, there's quite a bit more work to do before this is functioning the way I want, but for now I'm going to plan this week's video. On Wednesday, yesterday, and today, I've spent most of my time just trying to figure out the physics problem and getting things ready to record this week's tutorial video, which unfortunately means that there hasn't been too much to talk about lately. Today I finally gave up on trying to solve the problem with the player and caps not colliding properly, and this evening I decided to reproduce the issue in a bare bones project and share it on the Beppu Physics forums. Hopefully I'll get a response soon, but in the meantime I need to focus on something else, as this has taken up way too much time already. I was considering diving into Klein prediction in this devlog, but seeing as I'm already in the second week and haven't started that, I think I'm going to work on properly interpolating between the state updates that clients receive from the server. I'm extremely tired of having so many moving objects look choppy, like the steering wheel and the cannons. This is something that detracts from the experience of any playtesting I do, and I should be able to fully implement interpolation within one or two days if I actually sit down and focus. It's around 2 o'clock now on Wednesday afternoon, and I've just finished putting together the bulk of the code which I think I need to make client interpolation work properly. In the first real devlog here on my channel, I actually worked on something similar to help smooth out the movement of objects. However, back then I simply made clients lerp between incoming states, so it was super basic, and it felt really ugly too. Once I get everything working, my new interpolation system will actually show the world state from 100 milliseconds ago. Having clients run slightly behind the server is a pretty common practice, and it almost entirely eliminates the need for clients to predict the movement of objects besides the local player. This results in less incorrect predictions, and therefore less of a need for reconciliation. A 100 millisecond delay isn't super noticeable, it removes some of my workload because I don't need to implement prediction for every single moving object, and it makes it possible to show clients the actual path of objects with much better accuracy. I'm going to grab something to eat, and then we'll find out if my code works. Alright, so after fixing a few oversights that produced errors and prevented the client from running, interpolation works. So far this isn't anything new, at least not visibly, as I've only applied the new interpolation code to the ship. Tomorrow I'll make it work with other objects like cannons and the steering wheel, and then you guys finally won't have to watch them move so choppily anymore. It's Thursday afternoon now, and I wanted to take a moment to once again thank all of you for watching my videos and supporting me. We've hit 500 subscribers, which is another pretty big milestone. I'm really looking forward to making more devlogs and tutorials, and growing this community further over the next few months. Anyways, I've implemented the interpolation for the wheel, and as you can see it now spins nice and smoothly. However, as you might have already noticed, there's quite a bit of jumpiness going on. I'm not sure what else to call it, but my interpolation code seems to be making things bounce up and down, which is what I've been investigating for the past while. Additionally, I just noticed that the wheel spins much slower in the editor than if I build the game, but I really have no idea what's up with that. It's currently 4.30 on Friday afternoon, and after investigating a little bit, I noticed that it was actually the player that seemed to be jittering around, and not the ship. Since I hadn't applied the new interpolation code to the player yet, I went ahead and did that, which pretty much solved that problem. However, that resulted in some very obvious bungee movement, which was mainly caused by the fact that I'd forgotten the equals sign in an if statement. Instead of checking if the target position's tick value was less than or equal to the client's tick, I was only checking if it was less. This caused the interpolation code to bridge the gap between the previous position and the target position too quickly, so then the object, in this case the player, would overshoot its intended position and then require correction. That's fixed now and the movement looks much smoother. As for the steering wheel spinning slower in the editor than in the built game, that's not actually the case. I've now seen it spin slower than usual in the built game and faster in the editor. Although I'm still not sure why this is happening, it's not related to the editor. It's 5.30 now and I just fixed the wheel spinning too quickly. 
The wheel state wasn't being rewound like the rest of the world, so inputs were essentially being counted twice, which made it spin faster. I'm hoping that this will have taken care of the weird issue with the wheel randomly spinning at different speeds, but I haven't done enough testing to confirm that. Anyways, I'll leave it there for this devlog. If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment to smash the like button, as it really helps out my channel. In the next devlog, I think I'll look into compartmentalizing the world to allow me to only send data to those clients that actually need it, which is another important step to prevent cheating. If you're interested in joining me on this game development journey, make sure to subscribe and consider hitting the notification bell so you're always notified when I upload another video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.